Mr. Moderator, the floor is yes. yours. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. So I think uh, for the first um, opportunity, because uh, Ibu Elena Contura is the only lady here, I would like to give the opportunity first to Ibu Elena to share to us some thoughts, perhaps from the perspective of the European Parliament. Uh, you are the member of the European Parliament, right? How to overcome this uh, future of works? What kind of skills uh, should we require to overcome uh, our future problems? Uh, what kind of educations should be put there to anticipate everything? And what kind of um, jobs that is going to be our favorite of job in the future, uh, especially, of course, in the tourism industry. So, uh, Ibu Elena, uh, probably around five minutes of time, it's yours, Ibu, starting from now. Thank you so much. I would like uh, to thank you for inviting me to join you today with this uh, distinguished uh, guest and this exciting panel. Well, travel and tourism is all about connecting people yeah. and places. It's not only uh, a catalyst for economic activities and revenues, but a very effective way for cooperation, exchange of cultures, and for bringing progress in local communities across the world. Therefore, tourism concerns us all and, and affects us all and should be high on the agenda of policy making and also in the public dialogue on how we shape the future. The pandemic has indeed changed the way we move and travel and also um, uh, had a huge impact in the workforce. Uh, so right now, unfortunately, we, we are uh, experiencing a chain of parallel crises that continue to impact travel and tourism along with the pandemic, which is still here. We should not forget that. This crisis emerged from the war in uh, Ukraine and other uh, geopolitical uh, tensions around the world. The economic crisis is very concerning with the rising inflation and soaring uh, prices of goods and services. And of course, this makes it even more difficult for uh, uh, the transportation and uh, for uh, the budget of uh, uh, the tourists. Don't forget the fuels, the ticket prices as well, the operational cost of the whole chain, the hospitality chain, such uh, hotels, restaurants, cafe, local businesses. So on European level, we have pushed for bold action to prevent a domino effect in the travel and tourism sector that have been hit very hard, as I said, in the past three years. And our main concern is for travel to return to the pre-pandemic levels to become more resilient and to be able to adapt to the new uh, environment with the least possible losses. This is why uh, it, the European Parliament, with four resolutions, we have asked first and foremost that EU provide adequate financial support to the sector, especially small and medium-sized businesses, because don't forget that almost 80% in the hospitality sector are small, medium-sized businesses and family business. Through the next generation, EU, which is the main European program funding recovery, we have asked for increased funding to enable the sector's uh, recovery and also its uh, green and digital transition, including incentives for a green hospitality infrastructure and for upskilling and reskilling of the tourism workforce. Um, in my country, for example, Greece, uh, recent research showed that less than four out of 100 businesses have access to bank loans and only six out of 100 are founded by the Recovery and Resilient, uh, Resilience Facility and other European funding programs. So it's very important to support the small medium uh, businesses to survive 
especially in times of uh, harsh crisis. And it's all about protecting social cohesion, equal opportunities, employment, and for maintaining the unique characteristic of warm, personalized hospitality that travelers seek. Um, I can also uh, say one word about the workforce. Uh, we need to work the public and uh, the private sector to make uh, better conditions for uh, the employees and also best salary. Sure. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Ibu Elena Contura. Big applause right. to Ibu Elena for sharing the thoughts with us. Last but not least, I would like to have some uh, closure statement from Ibu Elena, perhaps. Just a couple of so words, much. Ibu. Yeah. I have to say that employment in tourism suffered a great shock in the first uh, year of the pandemic. And uh, as we know, there was a loss of 60 million jobs globally. You remember the great resignation phenomenon that uh, uh, happened uh, and, and, uh, because of the workforce during the lockdown and the restrictions was either laid off or put on hold. So for me, it's uh, very important to support policies uh, to ensure decent work conditions and better salaries in the sector and also education, reskilling and upskilling because these people are the heart of hospitality. And it's important to make sure that um, the tourists will have the service that they deserve. And one word for resilience, innovation and sustainability is everything about tourism because uh, it's not only, as uh, was said before, the uh, arrivals or uh, the revenue. Uh, this data has to be for the social and local economy as well for every destination. So it's very important uh, to make sure that uh, the sector will give the best um, uh, services because the way of travel changed yeah. so much. Thank you very much. Big applause to all of us. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.